Okay. Let's talk about... I was uh, entrenched to do this video due to a few requests because I'd completely forgotten about the Sony A99 II. But let's go over some hardcore facts, not my opinions, some real hardcore facts about the Sony A99 II, the newest camera from Sony, and why it's an epic failure. And after you hear this video, the Sony people are going to downvote it, which I don't care. But inside this video will be hardcore irrefutable facts that the Sony fanboys will have absolutely no comeback for. They will be hardcore, existential, and empirically irrefutable. The translucent mirror that sits in front of the sensor on the Sony A99 II, if you were to remove it, there would be a 30% roughly increase in light. Okay? I assume you know what a translucent mirror is, right? Unlike the flappy mirror inside of a DSLR that is constantly raising and lowering to uh, let the uh, shutter assembly expose the sensor, this mirror does not move. It sits in front of the uh, sensor. It transmits light up to be viewed, so it leaves the blackout time basically to nil, which is a positive feature. However, the electrostatic uh, charge on that mirror, a lot of people are reporting that it's actually acting like a vacuum for dust. And unlike uh, sensor dust, and of course the dust is never on your sensor, it's on the cover glass um, that sits over top of the sensor, which act like little translucent blobs. These are very pronounced blobs um, as far as dust specs, but that's not important either. But I mean, that is an issue. Even a hardcore Sony A99 uh, shooter that was on Max Yuryev's channel, yeah, it was a Max, Max Yuryev's um, YouTube channel where he was comparing the Nikon D5 of the Sony A99 II with the Sony A99 II shooter who said he's already had to replace his mirror. Um, people were attacking Tony's channel, you know who Tony is, um, because he actually said on the Sony A99 II uh, video that, uh, that uh, the translucent mirror blocks 30% basically 33% of uh, the light, and he's correct. Um, even though the Sony A99 II fanboys, or the Sony fanboys in general, were attacking for this, uh, Tony is right about that. If you remove that mirror, there is an increase of basically 30% plus of light. If, let's roll the clock back a few years, basically two years, and I was looking at comments where everybody, even all the Sony fanboys, thought that uh, the uh, A99 series of Sony was history. And so they were saying that the, the translucent mirror um, uh, of Sony was history. And they were even saying this, this translucent mirror has issues. I mean, even then, the Sony fanboys were saying two years ago, long before they knew there was going to be a new Sony A99 uh, Mark II, they're saying, you know, they don't need to bring this camera back. The translucent mirror has issues. But when they found out, I was reading comments from two plus years ago, but when they found out that it's coming back again, oh, well, that's just, you know, that's just awesome. I can't wait for it to come out. So all of these people are leaving these comments stating that translucent mirror should be dead two plus years ago. Now they're incredibly excited about its reintroduction. If you remove that mirror, there is over a 30% increase in light. But most importantly, and I looked at the Flickr page for the Sony A99 II, I literally looked at hundreds of images. Now, people can tweak and saturate the images however they want. And, of course, there are a lot of different lenses that are being used on the Sony A99 II. And they can drag and edit those uh, pictures to their delight before uploading them to Flickr. But if you actually look at hundreds of images using many different lenses, one thing is extremely abundantly clear, and I knew that. Knowing what light is, how light works, and what micro contrast is, for example, those are intertonal details. Those are low gain signals. People, a lot of people don't even know what the hell micro contrast is. Okay? Let's say you have a white sheet of paper, you draw a stick figure on it. Okay, you have the black of the stick figure, and then you have the white of the background. Okay, that would be some really high contrast. What would be, what would be micro contrast? It would be all the little shading that you give to actually give depth and uh, reality. You know how some of the really old black and white images were just incredible? They are like low element count lenses. Like, wow, you know, these black and white images really pop. 
before they call it micro contrast, they're calling it pop. With Zeiss lenses, they're calling it Zeiss pop. When you place a translu translucent mirror in front of the sensor that never moves, that is blocking over 30% of the light, the first thing, okay, we got 30% of the light that's not hitting the sensor. Fact. Here's another hardcore fact. Any low gain signal transmission from the subject that you're shooting, regardless of the damn lens you're using, okay? There are a lot of different lenses, obviously, for the Sony A99 II. Some better, some worse than others. We're just talking about all the damn lenses. When you're blocking off 30% of that light, and you are, that is exactly what is occurring, that is irrefutable, 30% of that light is dropping. Not only do you have a slower lens, okay, let's just forget about that fact, which it is a fact. You have a fast lens, we're going we're gonna to block 30% of the light that uh, could be hitting that sensor, but now we've got a permanent mirror sitting in front of it. The one thing that is absolutely, irrefutably, and undeniably not ever, ever reaching that sensor, ever, are the low-gain intertonal details that define microcontrast. Can, can we repeat that again? What is never hitting that sensor with any lens are low-gain intertonal details. That would be like the shading. You ever seen like a black and white drawing that was really realistic and it has all this like light gray to dark gray shade? That's low-gain intertonal details. That's the best analogy that I could think of. You ever look like at a, at a really crappy black and white image? It's really stark. It's like it's either very white or it's very black. All the intertonals aren't really there. That's what happens when you do a black and white photography session with a super high element count lens on a normal DSLR, which has a flappy mirror. It means that mirror moves out of the way when the image is taken. This mirror never, ever moves out of the way. Here I am taking pictures. The mirror doesn't move. This is a DSLR. What happens every time you take a shot, the mirror moves out of the way. Brrr. Sony A99 II. Brrr, brrr, click, 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 click. The, the mirror never moves out of the way. It's a translucent mirror. This is obviously 100% reflectance. Basically, actually, a silver coating mirror like this is about 92% reflectance. But one third of the light is missing. That's bad enough. That makes the lens slower. But what is absolutely and undeniably occurring, and I, and I I could, it's very evident looking at hundreds and hundreds of images, and that's exactly what I did, is that all those intertonal details are being lost because they are hitting that translucent mirror and they are not making it to the sensor. Now the Sony fanboys are going to piss and moan and gripe about this video and what I just said, but they have absolutely nothing to say against it because what I just said is irrefutable, undeniable, existentially valid, and empirically true. It is absolutely 100% ear frickin refutable. Low gain intertonal details are not reaching the sensor. The first thing that is going to be blocked out of the 30% of the light that is not making its way to the sensor are the low gain intertonal details. So ask me again why sticking a mirror permanently in front of a sensor is a bad idea. While the SLT mirror doesn't cost you all 30% plus of that light if you removed it you will gain 30%. What is shooting out of the butt of any lens mounted on that Sony A99 II, 30% of it is lost because of that mirror. That is irrefutable. The reciprocal of 30% is 23%. The SLT mirror transmits roughly 74 to 77%. If the SLT mirror, and this is an irrefutable fact, transmits between 74 to 77% of that light, that means basically uh, 10, 20, 30% of that light is not making its way from the butt end to the rear element of that lens, whatever lens it is, it doesn't matter, to the sensor. Because there is a permanent one of these goddamn things sitting in front of the sensor. What are you going to refute? What are you going to deny? 
What about what I just said was incorrect? Not a damn thing about what I just said is incorrect. I, I would like to buy a really expensive lens and an expensive uh, camera. Yeah, but what I want to do is I want to stick a permanent mirror in front of the sensor that never moves, and it blocks a third of the light <clears throat> that is being shot out of the rear element of that expensive lens I paid a lot of money for. Yeah, yeah, that does seem like a bad design idea. Oh, yes, and very, very importantly, I like to do black and white photography. But instead of my uh, black and white images having nice pop or inner micro contrast, it's been called a lot of stuff over the decades, okay? I didn't come up with micro contrast, by the way, okay? Some people think I'm like some sort of cult figurehead that it came up with micro. Micro contrast or pop or Zeiss pop has been around for decades. People were talking back in photography school about pop decades ago. I was even the first person to hear, like, what's that pop, you know, before I knew anything decades ago? It's like, oh. I didn't come up with that. <laughs> yeah, I want a mirror. I'm going to do black and white photography. Yeah, all those intertonal details which are low gain, by definition, are low gain signal. I'm not talking about the loss of high gain, meaning, you know, high contrast light, the speculars, the upper 30% of signal strength. We're talking about the lower 30%. If you take a sensor and you subdivide it between the really bright light that is hitting the sensor to the really dim light, guess what? 100% of the image pop or micro contrast is down here. But that is what this is blocking out. I need one of those phones, need one of those drops, one of those mic drops. I'm going to take my mic out and drop it. If you don't understand that, I am sorry. But that is a fact. And you can't deny it. I don't care how much of a fanboy you are. It's irrefutable. Good luck with that.